Greetings exiles, and I continue my journey. Let's start this video with our favorite motivational intro and some lucky drops. That's a good start. Almost a perfect roll. And one more. Sometimes Nameless Seer can surprise you. Three divine orbs at once. My mappers deserve a little bonus and a day off, for sure. My favorite altar. Too bad there are only eight divine orbs this time, but it's better than nothing. Interesting. Small jackpot. Before I get to shopping and start spending all this currency, let's talk a little bit about my atlas and how I earned the currency. Because a lot of people think that all my divine orbs are just lucky drops. But that's not really the case. The first earning strategy is a stacked deck. I've been wanting to try it for a long time and I think this build is perfect for it. For this you will need 5 of these scarabs and preferably 8 mods map. Thanks to these scarabs, we will find from 50 to 80 stacked decks every map, and this will be the basis of our earnings. And Ritual adds a little extra spice and allows us to get a few extra divine orbs. Although the main purpose of Ritual is to resurrect monsters that drop stacked decks. Poor and addicted souls. I hope they find peace in these stacked decks. Pretty simple and lazy strategy. But with it you can expect 6 to 7 divine orbs per hour. But personally I didn't like it very much, because it's boring and also I would like to earn more. So I decided to try another atlas. I personally don't like T17, but selling these maps can be very profitable. So let's farm some T17 maps. You'll need an atlas like this one. And some scarabs like this. And of course 8 mod maps. Also it is preferable to make scry. Since I am a copium enjoyer for me it will be the apothecary, but I recommend choosing something more realistic. Quite an interesting strategy for which this build is well suited. On average you will find one T17 map every two maps, and considering the fact that we complete a map in less than two minutes that's 15 T17 maps per hour. You will have situations where you will find a T17 map every map, but at the same time you will have situations where in 3 to 4 maps you will find nothing. It's random and bad luck. But you can always buy a hexproof amulet or uninstall Diablo 4 from your computer. I'm sure it will help you get your luck back. But on average you can count on 1 T17 map every 2 maps. Pretty profitable strategy, not gonna lie. Also with this strategy our maps have a lot of item quantity and rarity. So we will often find quite nice bonuses. And if you have a lot of faith, you can even find the apothecary. Alright, enough talk about currency, let's spend it. I need a second large cluster. And one medium. This one's unique jewel. The perfect place for it. A new jewel. And some harvest crafting. Looks good to me. A unique flask for more explosions. The interesting thing is that explosions from this flask are fire, lightning, or cold. But thanks to Shapers of Flame all our damage can ignite and that means that ignite damage from our gloves will always work. Very good. And another satisfied customer. Now it's time for the silly purchases, or rather the silly crafting. Silly because I need these runes, and they cost more than 100 divine orbs. But personally, I don't care because I want to try this tormented soul enchantment. What can I say? 
The extra movement speed and random bonuses from Tormented Spirits feel pretty good, but as I thought 100 Divine Orbs is too expensive for such an upgrade and I recommend leaving it for last. Because there are many more useful purchases for such a cost. You know what else I wanted to try? A 50 mil shipment. And that ship has just arrived. Let's see what it brought me. Eight divine orbs. Two mirror shards. One expensive tattoo. Enlighten and some stacked decks. Not bad, but frankly I'd like more mirror shards. Well, let's just say it's compensation for the small number of mirror shards. Thanks, Chris. All right, it's time. Time to buy an endgame belt. Nice. With four flasks. Cat's luck. I also need a Svalin with this Corrupted Implicit. You can use tattoos and it will be cheaper, but unfortunately I can't use them because I'll lack intelligence. Thread of Hope Allows us to save some skill points. Since I have Mageblood now, I don't need Timeless Jewel anymore and I can put the Light of Meaning in its place. And the New Ring I need essences for that. Not bad, but let's try to do better. That's what we need. Now let's see what I ended up with and talk a little bit about this build. As you may have noticed this video is late and it's because I like this build so much that I didn't want to say goodbye to it. A fast build with satisfying explosions. I love builds like this. This build has no problems with mapping including T17 and T17 is a joke for us even without mage blood and all because we have a very good defense, but unfortunately for T17 we have a big weakness. Namely single target damage. And for T17 bosses it is very bad. I tried many skills, but unfortunately all of them don't give us good single target DPS for T17 maps. And sadly the only way to fix it is this helmet with level 30 or more decay support. But in the final build I will not use it and there are several reasons for that. First of all, it is quite expensive and after my video it will be even more expensive. In addition, when I bought this helmet on the market there were only 7 such helmets and there is a good chance that even if you have the currency you just cannot buy it because no one will sell it to you. And I don't like doing builds where you need a specific item that is very hard to buy. It's also a pretty crappy helmet because it doesn't give us useful characteristics and in order to use it you need very good gear. And most importantly, even with the Forbidden Shako you won't become a mega killer of uber bosses. Now on your screen you can see the battle with the T-17 boss where I used the Shako and it took me a minute to kill this boss. Not the most impressive numbers, but if you invest a bit in damage and duration then you can reduce that time to 30 to 45 seconds which overall isn't too bad. But as I said before the final POB will not have this helmet for a number of reasons that I mentioned earlier. And this is just a small demonstration and one way to fix our horrible single target DPS. In my final POB, I will be using Essence Drain of Desperation with Trap Support. Alternatively, you can use Storm Burst with Decay Support. As I said before, I have tested many options and these are the two skills that give us the most single target DPS. That's why I recommend them. DPS will be bad, but you can handle the boss in two minutes especially if you use Vol Breach. A little luck. Boom. And the boss is dead. And the last two purchases. Jewel with Corrupted Blood Immunity. And Progenesis for even more survivability. 
Also since I don't use Hexblast Mines now I don't need much mana and I can activate Herald of Ash for more explosions. And the final form. Death's Oath is a great build for mapping and for those people who don't want to press a lot of buttons. We're pretty fast and our explosions are beautiful. But get ready that boss battles will not be fast, but thanks to our good defense you will feel confident in the battle with T-17 boss and on T-17 maps. It has been a great journey but it has come to an end and it's time to say goodbye. Thank you all for watching and commenting. I appreciate it. Also I will be very grateful for your likes and subscription. Bye everyone and see you in the new video.